So hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and configure the Google Analytics app that I have created for you. So first of all, to get the app, you have to go to Business Apps, App Source, and here create, select Apps. Go to Power BI Apps and you'll search here for the Google Analytics app. It's not published yet, so I cannot show you, but let's pick, for example, this one, MailChimp. So you will click here, Get It Now and then it will install it. So when you go back to Power BI, you will see your app in here and it will be called Google Analytics, okay? So now we need to configure this. And when you click on it, it will be presented with three options, customize and share, explore with sample data and connect your data. So customize and share, what it will do is create a workspace with the app and the report so you can customize it as you see fit. Explore app. It just allows you to explore the app without you putting in your data, authenticating yourself. And in here, connect your data will basically, you will connect with your credentials and download your data. So if we click here and connect, because this is the one that you need to configure, you will present it with a few parameters that you need to fill in. So first it will be account ID, property ID, and VOID from Google Analytics. If you don't know what this is, you need to go to Google Analytics and you need to go here to the admin and select the account property and view that you want your data from. And you see here account settings. If you click in there, you will get the account ID. If you click on property settings, you will get the property settings ID. And if you click the view settings, you will get the view settings ID. And you need to put those numbers in here, in there, and in there, okay? Now, start date and end date. So the start date is the first date where you want your data to be loaded from and the end date. This is very useful, especially if you have a lot of data and you get sampling, so you can at least minimize it with it. If you wanna have future dates, so it updates automatically, just put a future date in here, put like 2040 and then it will update by itself. So now I'll show you how to configure the contact page uh, parameter. You can leave it at the end and do it after the page has loaded. It's not a mandatory parameter, but I'll show you. So what you need to do is you need to go to Google Analytics, go to Behavior, and Site Content, All Pages, and then pick a date range where you believe that your contact page is going to be there. Somebody has to visit your contact page in order to do this. Pick a lot of rows and then go up and here choose page title. So we're going to filter the contact page by page title. So you need to have the exact name. Do control F to search and then write contact because I'm guessing that your contact page will include the word contact. Just search for your contact page and whatever is in here, copy that and paste it into the contact parameter. Okay, so it has to be the page title of your contact page for the page lead generation page to work. Okay. Here you put the name of your website. For example, in here, my, the name of the works, website is kerbal.com. So the name is kerbal. You put kerbal in there. And the domain is in this case .com. So you put .com too for this particular website is uh, sinoguide.com. That's fine. Now, once you have that, you have two more options. You have, this is for configuring the calendar. So you can choose which language you want it on and when your week starts. So here you have some text that explains a little bit more for the language. I have on the blog, on the help page, you can see in here, the language, the, there is a link to a language code. And this is basically a Microsoft documentation that will give you the language code that you need to enter, okay? So depending on which language you want, you will pick one of these. And then once you have it, you enter it in there and then you're good to go. Once you have entered all that, click next. And now 
it will ask you to authenticate, okay? So you can choose the privacy settings that you prefer, Let's say organizational, for example, and then you log in with your account. And if everything goes well, which it should, you will get access to the app. So this is all.